It seems like every couple of months, LEGO comes out with a brand new giant set for all of us to oogle over. And I thought it would be interesting to take a look at the top 10 largest LEGO sets as of right this very moment, because who knows if in a couple of months we could see something even bigger and badder make its way onto this list. So while the iron is hot, I want to go through the top 10 largest sets of all time. I'm leaving off a couple of items here that happen to repeat. So like the Millennium Falcon, the Taj Mahal, I'm only going with the more current versions of those sets. That way it's not as repetitive when you're looking at the list as a whole. And the first one on the list is set number 31201, the Harry Potter Hogwarts Crests. Now this one is from the Lego art line and it has 4,249 pieces, retails for $120. This one involves a bunch of one by one round tiles to make up a giant image. And if you buy one of these, you could make any of the four houses from Harry Potter. And if you buy all four, you could make a giant crest if you wanted to. So I can't say that I'm gonna do that because placing 16,000 pieces onto the black canvas is quite a lot of work, but if it suits your fancy and you want a really nice looking art piece for your wall in your one bedroom studio, this would be a fantastic wall decoration for your hallway or wherever else you want to. Next up, we have 10214, the Tower Bridge has 4,287 pieces and retails for $240 in the United States. This one I have a little bit of trouble recommending because it's very repetitive in that the two towers that are on the tower bridge look identical. And although it's at a micro scale and there's a lot of detail that's involved here, a lot of the colors are very neutral in tone. It's obviously very reflective of the actual structure in real life, and that's great. So if you've been to the Tower Bridge before and you want something to reminisce your time over there, and if you want to keep busy, 4,287 pieces is quite a long time to uh, keep going. Next up, we have 75827, the Firehouse Headquarters. And if you're a Ghostbusters fan, you already know about this set and you wish you had it because it goes for quite a bit on the aftermarket now that it's retired. It has 4,634 pieces, 10 minifigures, and retailed for $350 when it released a little while ago. If you know Ghostbusters, you know what this is all about. And although we had other sets come out in the past and maybe more in the future with the new movie, this firehouse headquarters is beautiful, even if you don't like Ghostbusters. Putting this alongside the other modulars in your LEGO City fits really naturally, and the details on the inside are incredible as well. So good luck getting your hands on this. If you missed out on it the first time around, it's gonna be a tough one to get your hands on. The next one is 75252, the Imperial Star Destroyer. 4,784 pieces, retails for $700. Now this is a very big gray Star Wars ship, but it's very iconic nonetheless. People usually choose between the Imperial Star Destroyer or the Millennium Falcon when it comes to a large Star Wars build, but a lot of people have claimed that this is actually a bit more iconic than the Millennium Falcon because this is one of the first ships you see when you are watching the Star Wars saga as a whole. The Star Destroyer along with the Tantive IV are incredibly iconic, and although it is very gray and very big, it does make for an incredibly striking display piece, and you're gonna need a lot of room in your studio if you're gonna wanna put this bad boy on display. Next up we have 70620 Ninjago City. 4,867 pieces and retailed for $300 when it released. There's so much detail going on here. The colors are absolutely incredible. The play functionality in here is so unique because of how many different situations are involved in this build. It's like a Lego modular building combined with a cyberpunk vibe along with the Ninjago flair that you know and love. It's an incredibly striking set and it has 19 minifigures in it, so you have lots of play potential there, and you could even put this in your LEGO City along with the modulars as well. I missed out on it when the Ninjago movie came out a few years ago, but if you have this set, you know it's one of the best LEGO sets of all time. Next up, we have 75978 Diagon Alley. It has 5,544 pieces, has 17 minifigures, and it retails for $400 in the US. 
If you're a Harry Potter fan, you know what Diagon Alley is, and you know just how detailed and accurate this is to the movies and the books. And when you're looking at this lineup, you see incredible amounts of color, and although they are just buildings, there's enough detail on the inside and enough variety that it makes it incredibly unique when you're building each of the four buildings. And it being over 5,000 pieces, it's almost like you're taking two different modular buildings and putting them in this set. The scale of these buildings is really interesting, and with the amount of minifigures that are in here, it makes it a really good value. Next up on the list is set number 10256, Taj Mahal. Retails for $370, it has 5,923 pieces, and although this is very beige and very repetitive when it comes to the build process, it is very grandiose. So if you know the beauty of the Taj Mahal, you know just how beautiful the Lego version of it could be as well. There was a previous version of this set that came out in 2008. This is the newer version I'm talking about right here because this has one extra piece inside of it, and that is actually a brick separator. Otherwise, the two sets are entirely identical. Bringing it back around to Harry Potter, we have set number 71043, Hogwarts Castle. It has 6,020 pieces, 28 micro figures, and retails for $400 in the US. This is the end all be all Lego Harry Potter set. If you had an avid Lego Harry Potter fan and they just wanted to get one set and call it a day, this is the one to go with. You get all those micro figures, the four founding members of each of the houses, and you get all sorts of scenes within the castle from the entire Harry Potter franchise. This thing is stunning when you have it on display, and it's a permanent fixture in my setup in my studio. And even if you went out of your way to get a light kit to go along with this, you give it a new lease on life and just makes it that much more beautiful. Even if you don't like Harry Potter, you have to acknowledge just how detailed and magnificent this set is as a whole. And if you're a LEGO Star Wars fan, then you know just how beautiful the next set is on the list. It's set number 75192, Millennium Falcon. Has 7,541 pieces and retails for $800 in the United States. And this is a newer version of the Millennium Falcon that incorporates not only the original trilogy, but also the sequel trilogy characters as well. You may know about set number 10179, the Ultimate Collector's Millennium Falcon. That came out in 2007, but this version is objectively better due to the amount of details and the building techniques that are implemented into the set. This is an incredibly fantastic build. If you have a LEGO Star Wars fan and you want the end all be all set and you're like, ah, I want a little more color than what the Star Destroyer has to offer, the Millennium Falcon is a fantastic choice. And it really is an all-encompassing LEGO set because you're getting a lot of different building techniques in this set. It really gives you a good grasp on everything LEGO has to offer from building with actual bricks and going Technic with it as well. Make sure you're paying attention and focusing because this is a very intense build, not meant for the faint of heart. And the granddaddy of them all, the newest, the largest LEGO set of all time, is 10276 The Coliseum. 9,036 pieces and retails for $550 in the United States. And oh my beige, is this a big colossal beast? get it colossal coliseum yeah i said it it's an incredibly striking build and could be viewed as the ultimate collector series end all be all architecture set because of just how incredibly well detailed this has been made and it's very repetitive when you look at all the different arches in here when you have it on display it looks magnificent you could even put a plant inside of there, a cat. I mean, the possibilities are endless. You want to put some rotisserie chicken soup in this giant bowl? Hey, go for it. You do what you want. And even if you don't want to make the Coliseum itself, with it being 9,000 pieces and $550, this makes for a pretty good parts pack if you want to make your own modular or something else like that. So it's an incredibly articulate build, and I recommend it for anyone who's been to the Coliseum or just wants to say they've built the largest Lego set of all time. But considering how Lego operates, that's 9,000 pieces. And I have a feeling one day, it's all but inevitable, they'll come out with a 10,000 piece set. 
And I'm curious what that could possibly be because the Colosseum, I feel, could have justified being 10,000 pieces, but what could it possibly be? I was thinking maybe something from Egypt, maybe a pyramid or a sphinx or something like that, because we haven't seen really any architecture from that at all. But also, that would be very beige, so I don't know if they want to keep going with that, but I want to hear from all of you. Let me know what you want to see be the 10,000-piece LEGO set in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear any ideas that you have, because... It's gonna get there at some point. It's really, it, it's all but inevitable. My name is Brian Saviano here for Beyond the Brick. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Keep on building, stay safe, and get a good night's rest, all right?